Welcome to NFL Imperialism, Episode 2. NFL Imperialism is a concept inspired by YouTuber Simulated's Battle Royale series and the iconic war strategy board game Risk, blended together with Madden 23. Essentially, I will spin a randomizer wheel with all NFL teams on it, followed up with a spinning directional arrow to see which way that team begins its move. Now, there are two possible occurrences that could go down from here. A. Expansion. This occurs when the arrow points towards an open territory, or better known just unclaimed states, meaning the state will be added on to the team's land area. Or B. Conquest. This occurs when the arrow points directly at an opposing team, which results in a battle. The team selected will be on the road, while the team getting attacked will be at home. The winner of the Madden simulated game will claim all land from the loser. This process repeats until there is only one team that's fully colored the map. With that being said, let's begin. NFL Imperialism. And so we begin from the same imperialism map as last time, but before we actually begin, gotta mention a few things. There's one thing I did not mention in the intro, which is pretty important for this video because we have a new twist. Thanks to Nicholas and Bryson for this idea, they had it about the same time, is players getting stolen after they get beat off the map. So I'm only gonna do one player stolen at a time for each team. Could do more, but that leaves room for improvement if I need to change it for future videos. I had a lot of you guys educate me about what this piece of land is right here. I called it Ontario, but this Upper Peninsula is actually just called Upper Peninsula. And a lot of you guys also say that the Jets and Giants actually play in New Jersey. I do know that, but I just feel like a lot of teams don't play where they actually say they are from. So I'll keep it simple. I'll just keep them in New York. It wouldn't really change much if they were in New Jersey anyways, because they would have to split the state, and then they would be touching the Eagles and the Bills, and it would be worse if they were in New Jersey. All right, I think that's it. I don't think I miss anything. So we can start with turn number one, which it brings us back to this wheel. Our first team selected on the Packers? Green Bay Packers will be the first team to make a move. We'll see what the magic arrow does. This is pretty important early on. And, ooh, that could be Minnesota. Not a doubt in my mind that's going through Minnesota. Remember the arrows starting from the logo, but that definitely goes through anyways. So we have the NFC North matchup as game number one. The Packers will be going into Minnesota. This is a tough game for them. A lot on the line here for game number one between the Packers and Vikings. Rodgers has been here before, but he also struggles here as he just overthrows. Looks to be Christian Watson. It'll be second down and 10 with 65 seconds left. Now a third down and 10. There was an incompletion second down and 10. Rodgers. All the time in the world. He's going to the end zone. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Oh, good defense. Breaks up Alan Lazard from bringing that one in. It's a fourth down and 10 now. And so game is on the line. Fourth down and 10. Rodgers from the logo. Looking. Runs out. Throw to Aaron Jones. Oh, he steps out of bounds. Turnover on downs. And the Packers don't think they can do anything with 46 seconds now on defense. And so, yes, the Vikings are moving on. Packers only had two timeouts with 40 seconds, so nothing they could have done. <laughs> Sorry, I was restarting my Madden. <laughs> what is this? And so, welcome the newest member of the Minnesota Vikings, Jair Alexander. It was a tough choice, but I think it's the right one. And so, our first team has fallen. The Green Bay Packers are out. Just like our intro sequence, the exact same story here. You could say, give him Rodgers, but I mean, he's a 90 overall. Kirk Cousins is probably like an 85, and Jair Alexander's a 93, so... It is going to land on the Eagles, or the Ravens? The Ravens. The Ravens got kind of screwed out of it last time. Maybe they'll have a better run this time. They have a lot of teams in their area. Uh, going a little bit northeast, let's see if there's anything up there. Yes, that looks like to be the Eagles, if I'm not wrong. That is a tough game, man. Yeah, sadly, this is going through Philadelphia. So, the Eagles will be playing the Ravens. Eagles at home. Third down and 10 for the Ravens. 2 minutes and 13 seconds. In a three-point game. Lamar backs up. Here comes some pressure. He's going to go with Mark Andrews on a check down. Oh my goodness. He actually puts on a move. He's going to get out of bounds at the two-minute warning. But it's be a fourth down and nine. Are they going to punt the ball here? They do have three timeouts. They will not. They are going to go for it. So if they don't get it, it's a whole different game. They would still have a chance if they punted it. But let's just see. Lamar looking for the pass. Nine yards to go. Almost gets sacked. Throw on the run. Got it. Mark Andrews. First down and 10 and out of bounds, so it stops the clock, saves a timeout. Wasn't a throw and a run, but Mark Andrews on the run there. Jackson looking for a pass. Again, a re open receiver, and that's a first down. Now 90 seconds on the clock. They haven't caught a timeout yet. Jackson looking for a pass. He's got Mark Andrews. Now he's going to run for it. He runs left, and he slides after a pickup of 8 yards, second down and 2. One minute now. Madden's great clock management is stepping up big time. Jackson, throw. Got it. Evades the tackle. 
and to the 15 yard line. So it's a first down and goal from the two. Jump ball. Is he in? They're going to call that a touchdown. I saw a foot out of bounds. But Sammy Watkins, who's back in the Ravens now, he just got picked up from the Packers, just caught a jump ball over Darius Slay, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Okay, so you're telling me that was a touchdown. All right, Madden. Well, no words. Here comes the extra point. This makes it a four-point game. They probably would have scored the touchdown anyway if they're at the two-yard line, but I don't think that was in. So Eagles get the ball back. 22 seconds. They have all three timeouts. Maybe they would actually use them. They're going to start the completion. Devontae Smith around the 40-yard line. Timeout number one is called. This is probably the final play here. Only five seconds remain. It's going to have to go the distance. He just threw it. He throws it on the run with that much power. Oh, no. We've seen this happen a lot. Madden just loves doing this. Pass interference on defense. We've had a game of horrible officiating, but sometimes games end like that. Eagles. Can they capitalize on this? The answer is no. That was horrible. And they take down the number one seeded Eagles. Eagles are the second team to fall out. Wow. Ravens win 28-24. The Ravens badly need a receiver because they have practice squad dudes playing right now. So, A.J. Brown to the Ravens. Kind of a wild matchup with the Eagles. The number one team in the league right now are out. Eagles, I'm sorry. Just like the Packers, you guys got bounced a little too early. All right. We have our next spin up next. This is going to land on the Texans or the Saints. The Saints. The Saints did not do much last time, so now there's redemption to actually make a move. We haven't seen any expanding yet, only matchups. This could hit Houston. If not, then we re-roll. That definitely hits Houston. So we have another game. It's the Saints going into Houston. Okay, Texans. Davis Mills leads them to a win over the Saints, 20-10, and they're going to be able to steal a good play from the Saints. This is actually pretty big. Full safety Tyron Matthew is now a Texan. You would think getting Alvin Kamara would probably be the best move there, but actually Alvin Kamara's Madden ranking is only three higher than Damian Pierce, so it just didn't feel like it was worth it. And the Saints have not really done much in this series yet off the board. Texans, way to go. Good win there. 29 teams left, and on to our next team. The Buccaneers, or the Texans again. The Buccaneers. So the Buccaneers are actually in a pretty tough place considering they share a state with the Jaguars and Dolphins. So it's just up to which way the arrow points. If it goes up or down, that's who they'll be playing. The arrow is landing closer to up. So that means I'm going to face them with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know the arrow didn't point there, but I was just going to see it has to land up or down. So we'll do the Jaguars. That means the Buccaneers will be going into Jacksonville. This is a trap game. Who would ever think the Buccaneers led by Brady would get beat by Trevor Lawrence by the two-possession game? Jaguars win 30-17, and they're going to steal a pretty decent player from the Buccaneers. You might have heard of this player before. Maybe there was better players than Brady, but come on, man. You can't, you can't pass on the Golden Boy. They need a franchise quarterback. Trevor Lawrence is good, but I mean, bump it up almost 10 overall. So no expansion yet. Only Conquest. Let's see how long it's going to take before we get one. Our next roll is landing on the New York Giants. Arrow points towards the right, which is going towards maybe Vermont. Yes, that is definitely going towards this. So the Giants add on Vermont. Okay, on to our next spin. We keep on spinning until we have a matchup. The Falcons, the Atlanta Falcons. Let's see what they do. Arrow is going towards a little bit southeast. Could that be Jaguars territory? Oh, that is. So Falcons will have to play Tom Brady. So a third down and four for Tom Brady on the Jaguars. Let's see if they can make a run in this video. Get a first down here and the game is different. If not, they got to take a field goal. Hand out the middle of Travis Etienne. And fourth down in inches. Timeout Falcons. So the Buccaneers decide they just want to kick the field goal. Look who's holding the field goal. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence has been demoted the field goal holder since Tom Brady took his spot. <laughs> They're under a minute. They didn't call a timeout. They're going to save it. Ritter looking for the pass. Another short pass to Cordell Patterson. That's going to do nothing. Falcons do not call a timeout here. And we'll be ticking down the numbers to 30 seconds. Three yards to gain. 30 seconds. Drop back pass for Rush the Jaguars. Throws it to his right. Third down and three in completion. Falcons stop to a big third down and three. Ritter looking to pass for Rush the Jaguars. Up the seam. Got it. Cordell Patterson. Seven seconds now for this Falcons offense. Can they stay alive and take down Tom Brady? Final play. Just going to lob up. Knocked up. On the ground. Jaguars will beat the Falcons 23-20. And we have a new empire growing in the South. AJ Terrell is now a new member of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So the devil went down to Georgia. 
It was actually just Tom Brady, and he took out the Atlanta Falcons in the process. So onward we continue to our next team selected. It will be the New England Patriots. What will they be up to this time? The Patriots will be going somewhere northwest. Do they have an option there? Ooh, that might be the Giants. I had to use a piece of paper for reference, but yes, it does go through Vermont, which means we have another matchup where the Patriots will be traveling to New Jersey. Well, New York, really, but Giants versus Patriots is our matchup. Daniel Mr. Dimes Jones is going to need to orchestrate an 80-yard touchdown drive if he wants to make a comeback. How in the world did he fit that into Darius Slayton? That made no sense. Two stupid passes later, the Giants have got himself to an early third down and 10. Let's see if they can actually convert here. Oh, they will. Easy enough. After a four-yard pickup, it's second down and six from the 45. Jones in pressure. There he is. Judon with 10-plus sacks on the year. Insane year for him. The Giants call a timeout. Matthew Judon on the outside. Big sack. Third down and 10 now. Let's see if Daniel Jones can get something going to the end zone here. Overthrows Darius Slayton. Now fourth down and 10 with 21 seconds. Him on the line, 4th down and 10 for Mr. Dimes. Up the middle, got it. Catch made at the 20, and timeout called with 14 seconds left. 13 seconds left, final play maybe? If you do that, yeah, that's, uh, that's game over. I mean, what do they expect? What does this game expect when you do a check down or a 5-yard pass up the middle with 10 seconds left with no timeouts? I'm sorry, I, I have to watch this a little too much. Patriots win. How could you pass on Saquon Barkley here? Let's be honest. A lot of teams which I thought would actually make a run are going out pretty early. So now we open up a border between upstate New York and Massachusetts as the Giants are unfortunately eliminated. And so our next spin is landing on the Cincinnati Colts. The Cincinnati Colts, yes. The Indianapolis Colts are up next. They will be going towards the west, a little bit northwest. And that basically comes straight contact with the Chicago Bears. So another game. Third down and 10 in Chicago. Fields, men 15. Runs up the middle. Does he have the space to get this first down? Oh, he slides. He slides too early. It's a fourth down and two. So that means the Bears are obviously going to have to go for this one. Do they run it? They do. Hand off up the middle. Under a minute now. It only wastes about 10 seconds. They line back up first down and 10. Justin Fields throws on the run. A little bit of panic there. Tries to get... David Montgomery to the outside, but only picks up seven with 35 seconds left. 20 seconds now. High snap. Fields. Going to go down. Flag to David Montgomery. Roughing the passer. They're in field goal range just about, but let's see if they can somehow score a touchdown. Looks like they're going to play for that field goal. They're going to call a timeout there. Interesting choice with 11 seconds. So this field goal would send the Bears and Colts to overtime, our first overtime game. Kick up through the middle almost short but it's got it we're tied in 20 we have extra football to play Colts start with the football in overtime I don't know how Nick Foles made it here oh fumble picked up by the Bears and just like that all I gotta do is kick a field goal with this game <laughs> what, what? <laughs> Jesus Chicago was not satisfied with three points so they said we're going all in bet the house on six David Montgomery dives in, and the Chicago Bears walk it off in overtime with a 26-20 victory over the Indianapolis Colts. Let's give Justin Fields some help. Superstar left guard Quentin Nelson is now Chicago Bear. I think that win is going to fly under the radar, but that was actually a pretty big win for the Chicago Bears. So now they have Illinois and Indiana added on to their landmass. Goodbye Colts, you have been eliminated. A lot of good players that could have stole there, but I feel like the Bears would have benefited big time from a left guard like Quentin Nelson, especially since Justin Fields wants to scramble so damn much. I believe we are down to 25 teams now, and we will continue with, oh, the Jaguars again? Oh my goodness, dude, this is huge. I mean, Jaguars win another game, they steal another player. It just adds so much difference when they steal players. What will the Jaguars be doing this time? This is our third time getting called upon. This arrow pointed to the Atlantic Ocean, so that one didn't count. That one's also in the Atlantic Ocean. River going from the logo, so... Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. This arrow right here comes in contact with Miami. I had to use a straight edge, but it does. So that means Jacksonville is marching down even more south to take care of the Miami Dolphins so they can get all of Florida. Jaguars at Dolphins up next. Brady at the two-minute warning, down by five in Miami. This is a huge game. That's a good pass there for the two-minute warning. 
If the Jaguars win this game, you already know what player I'm betting on the Jaguars. It's Tyreek Hill. I don't think... I don't think we need that to happen. The league does not want that to happen. Imperialism map does not need that to happen. <laughs> Tom Brady and Tyreek Hill, and they got AJ Terrell in defense. I don't really know if he's helped this game because they've allowed 28 points, but either way, this team is rolling right now. That's Christian Kirk, second down and one pickup right now. Man, just imagine Christian Kirk next to Tyreek Hill. I'm not rooting for the Jaguars or anything, guys. No, nothing personal. But uh, down by five, <laughs> a minute and 40 on the clock, and they have all three timeouts, and it looks like Tom Brady at least knows how a clock works because Madden is actually getting up to the line without use of timeouts. That's a first down pickup. Can he get out of bounds? He can. Russell's out of bounds, stops the clock at a minute and 30. Thank you for this good view of the photographers. Now from the 15, we're down to a minute. Another first down pickup for Brady in the Jaguars. That's a short pickup right there. We're going to be under a minute now, second down and six. They get back up with about 45 seconds left. It's the second down and six. It was a pickup of four. Brady, another short pass. This is the ETN, I believe. He'll be a yard short. It'll be third down in inches. Still no timeouts called. It's 30 seconds left. We're under 20 seconds now. This team wants to waste every second possible just by doing these short pickups. There you go. Timeouts called. They got the first down. They're at the two-yard line. They can run the football here if they use the timeout, which I don't think you want to do that. I don't even trust this game to call a timeout anymore. On the two-yard line, they'll elect to pass the football. Brady looking. Throws. Easy. Touchdown, Jaguars. They take the lead now over Miami. Zay Jones, only eight seconds left. Go for two. This would be a three-point game. It's a two-point conversion. They're just going to run the ball. Travis Etienne dives head first. Three-point game. And so the final play for Tua. Is Tyree Kill out there somewhere? If he's not, he'll be on the Jaguars in just a few seconds. Knocked up. Oh, it was almost a pick anyways. But Jacksonville wins 31-28. And they're adding a superstar elite wide receiver to their squad. It is scary hours in Jacksonville now. Tyree Kill, 98 overall. Brady at quarterback. AJ Terrell at cornerback. Three great pickups. This team is looking solid. So the Florida sweep has been complete. Out goes the Dolphins and the Jaguars take over. Not just Florida, man. I mean, it's, it's bad now. It, it's the whole country is on locked down now because this team is it's, it's looking good all right we are moving on maybe not jaguars this time please cleveland cleveland browns magic arrow points to the right a little bit north as well and that could come in contact with pittsburgh yes it does it goes right up here and hits this little top part right here so cleveland will be going into pittsburgh let's see if they stand a chance just outside the red zone of the 21 yard line kenny pickett down by four with this pittsburgh steelers team Winner is probably going to get a really good defensive player here. Throw to the end zone. What a grab. George Pickens, he's been making those catches his whole career. Short-lived career in Pittsburgh so far. And just like that, Pittsburgh takes the lead over Cleveland. Massage Boy will get a chance, though. Cleveland had a good return, so they're going to start dead from the 50. Field goal is all they need if they want to play for overtime here. Watson throws on his back foot. Got it. Kareem Hunt is open as a receiver. And he picks up a solid, what, 10, 15 yards there? First down and 10, we're under a minute now. A 20-yard pickup, actually, and a minute on the clock. So they're in field goal range. Let's see how they want to play this, though. I'd imagine they want to score six on the board, but who knows? Fresh set of downs. Watson looking for rush. Here comes some pressure. Gets it off in time. Kareem Hunt again. Can't really pick up much here. It's a two-yard pickup. Gets dragged out of bounds at least. Stops the clock. They do have a chance still to get the end zone here. Third down and eight for the Browns. Big defensive play. Here comes a blitz. Up the middle. Got it. Oh, steps out of bounds. That was a touchdown to David Njoku. Oh, man. Huge. Maybe they can still get a touchdown. They'll be at the seven-yard line, so they're in good shape. But if he keeps that foot in right there, that's a touchdown. And the Browns would have the lead. Half a minute remaining. Second and goal. Quick pass, easy. Amari Cooper had so much separation off that short route and a touchdown to take the lead. He did this last video, he does it again. Amari Cooper, it's going to be 28-24 to after the extra point. Steelers have a slim chance. Okay, I lied. Steelers didn't have a chance, actually. The Browns end up winning 28-24. to And I wonder if you can guess what player we're going to steal from the Steelers. That being TJ Watt. Yeah, TJ Watt, Miles Garrett on the same team. This is another team to look out for. Cleveland has a defense to watch out for. A 
feel like the Steelers, if they were to get Miles Garrett there, it probably would have been scarier, but they just couldn't come out on top. Steelers are eliminated. It will land on, please, please don't be, please. Oh my goodness. This is not fair. Th this is like, this is rigged. It has to be. All right, Jaguars, what superstar player are you going to be taking now? Let me guess, Derrick Henry? Okay, so going up north, it was in the Gulf of Mexico, so I couldn't do that. Oh my goodness. Does this hit South Carolina? P please tell me it does. The Jaguars don't need another turn. They don't need another player. We got lucky. We did not need to see Jaguars get, uh, you know, Derrick Henry there or whoever the Panthers have to offer. It did touch just like the tip, like Greenville, South Carolina is where it ran through. And it's going to land on the LA Chargers. Okay. Chargers are completely surrounded by three teams. Now it's just to see if it touches one of them. That's going to go closest to the Cardinals. I believe it is going through there, even though it is going south. Yeah, so that's going to hit Arizona. So that means the LA Chargers will be going into Arizona for our matchup. This is what happens when Colt McCoy is your quarterback. I mean, they really need Kyler Murray right now, but he's probably at home with his broken leg playing Call of Duty shipment 24v7. Nobody else other than DeAndre Hopkins himself. Here's our first movement out west. The Cardinals just did not send a chance. They are injured like crazy right now. And the Chargers add a stacked player to their roster, DeAndre Hopkins. The final game is going to be like a Pro Bowl game, just how many stars are on each team. But the Chargers will take Arizona. Keeping it going. Oh my goodness. Please, please, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. We did not want to see that team go again. <laughs> the, the Lions. Sorry, Lions, but invading Canada is not an option for this video. I, I said it again. We can't go to Canada. Uh, there we go. That is pointing towards America. It's either the Bears or the Browns. Let's see who it is. That's going to go through Chicago's land. So we have another NFC North matchup. Lions in Chicago. Let's go. So 30 seconds left in Chicago. I hope they do not let Quentin Nelson go to waste because that's a pretty big pickup for Justin Fields. Gets a catch here. That's a first down. And they call a timeout from the 7-yard line. Now first down and goal. We're at 20 seconds. Fields runs right. Throws. Oh, it's just short. It's going to be the 2-yard line. Thankfully, they have another timeout. Two yards to go, 20 seconds, nothing inside because we would not have another play if so. Easy, touchdown Bears, extra point away from tying it, Byron Pringle with a touchdown. Yeah, so this game went on for about 30 minutes, so enjoy this compilation in black and white sped up about 10,000% of real time. One and a half overtime periods later to finally have a winner. Can he get it? Michael Badgley, for the win, he's got it. Lions beat the Chicago Bears in overtime, 30 to 27. Quentin Nelson is getting passed around like a girl at a frat party, so he's on the Lions now. It was almost like there shouldn't have been a winner in that game because it went on for so long. But the border between Indiana and Michigan has opened up, and now the Lions have land from Upper Peninsula down to the bottom depths of Illinois, and the Bears are eliminated. Okay, so Lions could have been land now up in the Midwest area. We'll continue up to our next spin, which is going to have the Cleveland Browns again. Last time we saw the Browns, they added TJ Watt. They have an insane defense already. So what's their next move? I think, aren't they connected to the Lions? Is that, does that hit the Lions? Is that the question? That easily does. There's just no way that doesn't. Oh man, okay. So now Cleveland will be going into Detroit. Let's see if Detroit did that all for nothing. The answer is yes. The Browns win 41 to 28. I'm surprised they put up or allowed that many points with the defense they have. The Browns will add Deshaun Watson some protection, which is a good thing because I doubt he uses it in the first place. Frank Ragno, the center. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the two biggest threats right now on this map are the Browns and Jaguars. I guess that's just what happens when you allow teams to steal players from other teams. And so we will continue, and we get the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh oh, the real powerhouse. Let's see what they end up doing. For arrow points. A little bit west, a little bit southwest, you could say. That is an empty state. It hits Kansas, which makes perfect sense considering you are Kansas City. But Kansas City is not actually in Kansas. It's one of those false narrative moments. But this one actually makes sense. All right, a new spin. We haven't seen a lot of expanding in this video compared to the first one. The Minnesota Vikings. What's up for them? The last time they have been selected, they took out the Green Bay Packers. Now they have a new rising th threat in the Great Lakes area. It looks like they're going to go towards North Dakota here. Yeah, that definitely hits North Dakota, so we'll just go ahead and give them that. Just as I said, there hasn't been a lot of expanding. We just get two of them done right there. Maybe we'll get another one. Next team up, we have to do a spin until we get a matchup is how this works. 
We'll continue with the Chargers or Bengals. It's going to be close. Bengals. Okay. Bengals have a growing threat above their head right now, that being the Browns. Let's see if they take them on. Arrow points. No, they're going to... They're they're, just, they're scared. They're just getting out of there. Arrow is going down south. I think that's going to hit Kentucky here. Yes, it does. So the Bengals of Cincinnati will add Kentucky. And now... They share a border with Kansas City and Tennessee. So that might have made it worse. I guess teams just wanted to expand now. That's the, the difference of this game now. The Chargers up next. Okay, so the Chargers took out Arizona. They have LA teams right next to them. That might be going through the Rams. That's going through the Raiders. It kind of hits towards Vegas. So we have a game between the Chargers and... And the Raiders, an AFC West throwdown. Chargers get this win, and they win the Devontae Adams sweepstakes. Derek Carr was still playing. He should be benched, but either way, they didn't win. Does not matter. Jared Siddham probably would have done better than him anyways. Chargers moving on, and they will get, of course, Devontae Adams. But look at this wide receiver room. I forgot they got DeAndre Hopkins from the Cardinals. So they got Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams. Who is going to guard that? At West Coast, look out for the Chargers, more specifically the Niners, because that's probably the only competition you really have. Rams, I don't really think you guys stand a chance, but we haven't got to you guys yet. You don't have to worry about it yet. And the Raiders are off the board. Uh, did we expect anything else? I believe we are down to 19 teams, so hopefully your team made it to top 20. Welcome back, Ravens. Let's see what you guys are up to. You guys beat the Eagles on the second spin, I believe. So big things plan again, maybe? That could hit the Commanders. So this is what the arrow ended up looking like. It actually just barely misses everything. I'm not going to count that as Commanders, and I'm not going to count that hitting Virginia. So we're actually going to have to redo that spin. Maybe something else will come out of the spin. That might hit the Commanders. Yeah, that barely grazes right here. So that means the Ravens will go down into Washington, D.C. It's very hard to see right there because they have such a small bit of land. But Ravens at Commanders. Ravens down by four in the minute and ten on the clock. Lamar is going to take off for himself. Oh, good tackle from behind. Was that sweat? Timeout is called third down and three now. Huge tackle right there. That just saved the first down and forced the Ravens to burn one of their timeouts, one of their precious timeouts, which I doubt they would have used anyways. Lamar just going to run again. Chase Young is behind him. Can't catch up. Look at this run by Lamar. Stiff arms and gets taken down at the 35-yard line into Washington's territory. Huge Lamar run. Has set him up under a minute at the 35. They're going to need a touchdown, though. Chase Young was just about a yard off accelerating to get him. But Lamar is just too fast at the quarterback position. So first down and 10 from the 35 now. Lamar Jackson. Remember, he has A.J. Brown now as receiver. And Mark Andrews. So he has some weapons. Looks up the middle. Hits his receiver. And up to the 15-yard line now. So now at 30 seconds, they call a timeout. New set of downs at the 15. So now for a second down and one from the six. Lamar Jackson looking. Goes to the end zone. Got it. Touchdown Ravens. Demarcus Robinson. He didn't even need to use A.J. Brown there. Ravens take the lead in Washington. And I doubt they can respond. They should go for two here. So final play between Washington and Baltimore. Carson Wentz is just going to throw it as deep as he can. Which looks like was 20 yards. And game is over. Baltimore will beat Commanders 23-20 and will add another star to their roster. There's definitely some defensive players I could have added, but the Ravens short and wide receivers, I decided to stack up A.J. Brown with Terry McLaurin. Okay, so the Ravens will take this slither of land, which you can barely even recognize, and the Commanders are eliminated. So, to our next spin, you can already see our wheel is looking smaller when it comes to the total teams on it, and we... Vikings again. There's a lot of teams that have not been selected yet. Kind of sucks, but that's just what happens. Let's see what the Vikings do here. They're going to the right this time. That is just going to go straight to the Browns. So, oh gosh. I mean, this is huge. For the Browns, this is the Justin Jefferson sweepstakes. For the Vikings, either TJ Watt or Miles Garrett. Big game right here. We're going to Cleveland. The Great Lakes are turning purple. The Browns, who are building up a superpower of a team get taken down with the Vikings. So the Vikings are going to steal one of those players. They're not allowed to take all the ones the Browns stole. They're going to get one of them. More than likely, probably be Miles Garrett. Probably the safe and easy choice here the Vikings will get, Miles Garrett. Ready to see a big change in the map? 
there you go. Browns are off the board now, and you can see that the Minnesota Vikings now own land from North Dakota to Pennsylvania. 17 teams left on the map, and we will be going to the Buffalo Bills. We haven't heard from them once. They have been isolating themselves from society as of recently. They're a good enough team not to. They're going to go straight up north. Up north is nowhere. They can't do that. Again, let's see where they actually going to go. Now they're going to go down south. And that one, I think it's going to hit Baltimore. It's going a little bit to the right. If we go from the center of the logo, just barely, I think, this one hits Baltimore. Yes, so the Bills will be going into Baltimore. This is actually a tough place to play. The Ravens have been on a streak. Let's see what happens. Would be a lot of wasted potential if the Ravens cannot come out with a win, but the Bills are still a solid team. So this is a tough game to win. That's going to go to one of the new receivers. That's A.J. Brown. He's wearing number 83, but it'll be third down in inches. But Lamar got the first down. He ran for himself. First down in 10. New markers up the middle. That's a catch. First down in more. A.J. Brown again. First down in 10. It's hard to guard both McLaurin and Brown, but Brown is getting open right now. Keep in mind that time at two minutes is also important. They have to score a touchdown. Another pickup. This one's the Terry McLaurin. So... Using his new receivers effectively as Lamar Jackson, new markers into Bills territory. Two more plays possible for the Ravens if the Bills defense can step up, which will not. It'll be extended. That one's the Devin Duvernay, so Lamar is really using all his targets here to find a way to the end zone. One minute to score, touchdown. Lamar, got it. Easy. Touchdown, Ravens, to a new receiver, A.J. Brown who tied it up, or hopefully tied it up, put six on the board, extra point would tie it, and we're going to have some extending overtime. We've had a lot of extending overtime games already, but overtime two will most likely be happening after extra point made by Justin Tucker. Sorry, boys, I was on my phone. I don't know what happened, but the Bills are in Ravens territory now, so they can run the football, hopefully effectively. That's not running the ball effectively. Second down to nine now, but they can run the football down as far as they like. Kick a field goal, Bills win the game, which sucks. I mean, I'm not cheering for any teams, but the fact that these teams go out and get so many star players and then still lose is crazy. Ravens, who were gathering an offensive superpower. I mean, imagine if they beat the Bills and then I gave them Stephon Diggs. I mean, oh, who would who would stop Ravens' offense then? It's just unbelievable. Uh, looks like maybe one more play and the Bills will kick a field goal. Just kidding. This is the final play. It's going to be the field goal kick for the Bills to move on. Knock out the Ravens. No good. No. No good. There's time on the clock still. There's 20 seconds, I believe. Ravens have a chance now. They, get a they just need like 15 yards. Oh, my goodness. Tyler Bass hooks it right. And with 16 seconds left at the 42-yard line, it doesn't matter because a new overtime period starts. It's going to put the Ravens exactly where they are. So Lamar takes over from his own 42-yard line. Game is completely different now. Up the middle. Got it. Mark Andrews. You can't guard everyone. Final timeouts called the game. I would think they would go ahead and kick it from here with Justin Tucker. There's just no way he misses from here. And so here it is. It'll be about a 48-yard kick. Justin Tucker. For the win, yes, Ravens beat the Bills and will gather another player to the star-studded roster. I decided to give the Ravens Tredavious White because even though the Bills have players like Von Miller, Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen, the Ravens would not benefit from those upgrades as much as having another star cornerback. So Tredavious White will be paired up with Marlon Humphrey and Kyle Fuller as the leading men in the secondary. This team is stacked all over the board. They could have had Stefan Diggs, but they already have A.J. Brown and Terry McLaurin. So they really don't need them. This is a good pick, in my opinion. Ravens, dangerous. That really sucks for the Bills, but there is a lot of luck involved in this game. I'm not saying the Ravens got lucky to win that game because they have a stacked roster. But what's lucky is that the Ravens have been called upon so much that they have been just stockpiling players. Whereas the Bills, who have not been caught on once don't really have a chance. They're a good team, but I mean, just made the Ravens even better gaining a player from the Bills. So you can see how different imperialism goes down when we take players from other teams. I know I've been saying that a lot, but it's just the effect it has on it. It's crazy. I like it though. I hope you guys like it too. 
16 teams. Half the league is gone, half the league remains. So, second half starting now. We, we're all halfway through this? Okay, this is taking me forever. I don't know how long the video is because uh, I've just been recording all day, but the Vikings, again. So, the Vikings, another good team. What would they be up to? They just took out the Browns in the Great Lakes. I do not think they cannot go up there. There's only really few ways they can go from here. That's one of them, down. And I'm looking at it, and that just seems like they are taking South Dakota. A lot of land for the Vikings. Even bigger threat. Makes it easier for them to get targeted. We get the Titans. This is a team that has not been called upon yet, so good to get the Tennessee Titans. Let's see what they are up to for their first move. And going to the right. That is basically dead on to Carolina. Okay, last time we saw Carolina make a move in an imperialism video, they went a pretty long way. But, I mean, to make it now, the teams they have to beat, like the Ravens and the Jaguars, kind of sandwiching them in. Both really good teams. Going to be tough. Let's see if they can do it. Sadly, the Panthers will not be able to do anything this time, as the Titans will take them out on their first game. Brian Burns seemed to be the best option here, so I put him at left end for the Titans. Alright, the Panthers, who had a great run last time, sadly, they will not have a chance at anything. But, that's just how it works. Oh, now we have super long Tennessee. Uh, they are blocking out the Jaguars from touching the Ravens. They do not want them to fight. That would be the real Super Bowl. Who are we going to get next? Maybe a new team? The Bengals. They're not necessarily new, but they haven't played a game yet. I don't think there's anywhere to expand that way. This is probably a conquest. Which it is. This is going through Minnesota's land. Easily, not a doubt. So, the Bengals will be going into Minnesota. Oh my goodness. Okay, the first thought that's in my head right now. If the Bengals lose this game, Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase are teammates. So, the two-minute warning. Either way, Justin Jefferson's going to be on whatever team wins this. It just only makes sense. But let's just see if the defense can step up for the Bengals. Or, excuse me, the Vikings now. Because the Vikings defense, Miles Garrett and Jair Alexander, the Bengals are getting the ball back is what I'm saying. So, I mean, those two star players which they picked up this video are going to have to do some work if they want to stay alive this and steal Jamar Chase from the Bengals. Yeah, so th this is the basically the, the LSU wide receiver bowl. Who's, who is better, Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson, and who's going to have who? So, the Bengals will have a chance. This punt will I mean, it's a good punt. I mean, around the 25-yard line, not much of a return at the 27 two-yard return. And Joe Burrow will have to orchestrate at least three-point drive here for the minute and 46. First play on the drive, Joe Burrow. Good pass. Hits his tight end, Hayden Hurst, moving the chains up. You can see how many stars are on this Vikings defense. There's Miles Garrett in the end. Doesn't get out of it. But then, guess who tackles him? Jair Alexander. <laughs> so, I mean, both stars making a huge impact already. I wonder if they can stop them. The Bengals, they just need about 20 more yards. They can tie this game. But there's under a minute now. Let's see what happens. So, second down and four from the 45-yard line. That's a first down pickup. T. Higgins, oh, but was he tackled in bounds? Yes. So, now under 30 seconds. Fake the handoff. They're going to need at least 15 more yards. Miles Garrett almost sets free for a sack and overthrows his target. Hayden Hurst was open, so was Jamar Chase, but at least the clock stops at 25 seconds. From their own 48, Burrow looking to his right, got it. Looks like Tyler Boyd will make the catch. He'll step out of bounds at the 39-yard line, just one yard short of the first down line. I wonder if they're going to run this ball here. They'll have to waste the time out they do. They do, but it's a big run anyways, so he's in field goal range now. It's Joe Mixon. Timeout is called with 15 seconds left at the 26-yard line. I imagine they keep on running the ball here. Smart thing to do. And final timeout call for the Bengals. All right. Here's the field goal kick to send us to overtime. Money Mac. And he's got it. 27 up. I will be back in 30 minutes. We join overtime for the first possession. Vikings are at midfield. Third down and 15. So this is a big play. Cousins on the run. Almost throws a pick. Matter of fact, it should have been picked. Yeah, they cannot kick a field goal from here, which sucks for the Vikings. They got a punt, and they have to prevent the Bengals from scoring any points. This could be a huge upset. And they get the ball at the 20-yard line. Let's see what happens. Joe Burrow's got a completion up to midfield already. Now the 48-yard line. Sorry, I am standing up and talking right now. <laughs> 
from the 48 yard line. I would imagine 20 more yards would do it. That's a big chunk of them right there with T. Higgins. They run the football now. They can kick a field goal and win this game. Burrow and the Bengals said, nah, F that. We want a touchdown. We want to rub it in their faces. And this stacked defense with Miles Garrett and Jay Alexander. Burrow, gonna run for it himself? Why not? Touchdown, Bengals, huge upset. And Cincinnati takes down Minnesota 33-27 to in overtime. Call it stupid, but I just really wanted to see Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase in the same team. Yes, I could have done Miles Garrett, but I guess he's just lost a battle now. So a lot of history up in this region. We first had the Browns take control. Vikings beat them, and I thought the Browns were unbeatable. And then I thought the Vikings were unbeatable, but now, nope, it's all orange. Oh my gosh, that's insane. So now we're down to 14 teams, just like the NFL playoffs. Six of those teams have not been selected yet. There's one of them, the Rams. It's close between the Jaguars and Rams, though. It gets the Rams. The Rams, I believe they don't have a choice. They have to play somebody and this is actually a crucial matchup which i thought would make a big difference because the rams have jalen ramsey and aaron donald so you're saying if they have to play the niners and chargers somebody's probably going to get them because let's be real is the rams are they going to win I, I don't think so it is going straight right that is hitting the chargers no doubt so the rams will walk absolutely zero miles and they will put the chargers <laughs> yeah just as i expected I was so, so tempted to put Cooper Cup on this team because then they'd have Cooper Cup, DeAndre Hopkins, and Devontae Adams. I didn't do it. Aaron Donald is the easy choice here. 99 overall on the Chargers. This team is insane. Yep, I was expecting the Chargers to win, but I mean, man, 38-3? That just shows how dominant this team is right now. The Niners are pretty solid, too. I wonder if they can compete with this Chargers team with all these players they have. Here we have it right now. Still a few teams not even selected yet. The Broncos, they did this last time too. What are, what are the Broncos doing? They're just practicing isolationism. It's boring. Seahawks are, they're isolated in this corner up here. The Niners haven't been called. The Cowboys haven't been called. And the Jets haven't been called. So some good teams haven't made a single move yet. Okay, 13 teams remaining. And the one we'll land on, will it be the Seahawks? Ooh, it's close. Yes. Okay, so the only thing the Seahawks can do is expand. Uh, it's either going to land on Oregon or Idaho. It might take a minute, though. Let's just see how long it takes to land on something over there. That is into Vancouver. We can't do that. And there we go. That's going down to Oregon. Okay, so now the Seattle Seahawks are not so isolated anymore. Just like that, they now share a border with the West Coast threats, being the Niners and the Chargers. Cowboys? Or Patriots. Patriots, last move they made was the Giants a long time back. They have a lot of open space next to them too. We might start getting to a point where teams just start expanding a lot more. This actually runs just through New Hampshire, just barely, so they will be expanding. Now we have the Seahawks again. <laughs> okay, so the Seahawks are finally doing stuff. They can't go that way again. They can go that way. Okay, it looks, this is close. Oh, that's going to Chargers. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's Seahawks, man. Y'all y'all been doing nothing all game, and now y'all have to play the Chargers. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, Seahawks. But, hey, I mean, they put up a fight. They only lost by one score. That shows there's some weaknesses in this team. But Chargers, they're going to gain another player. Why not? Just just why not? It's funny because he's the fourth ranked wide receiver on this team. <laughs> I could have given him Quandre Diggs or uh, what's his name? Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams actually hurt. But, I mean, they didn't even need him. So, I mean, it's like, okay, fine. Just take DK Metcalf then. He's going to be that greedy. Go ahead and have the best wide receiver room in the history of the whole... I, just, I don't know. They did put up a fight. I mean, this team is known for putting up a fight even when they're down at their lowest. But the Seattle Seahawks are eliminated. And look at this. The Niners are completely enclosed in by the Chargers. So they only have one option if they get selected. And that's going to be tough. Going to LA and having to play them really depends... But the West Coast is dominated by the Chargers other than Northern California. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 more teams now. So we get the Chiefs, and the Chiefs have not played a game yet. Kind of crazy. I mean, they could get hot at the right time. Going to the East Coast. Oh, man. Kansas City versus Cincinnati in Cincinnati. 
Hey, I'm just saying, last time this happens, man, it's always the Bengals that comes out on top. Let's see. Wow, you know this video is crazy when the Bengals take down the Chiefs 35-21. to I mean, two scores. And now, the Bengals are going to add the best tight end. I could do Patrick Mahomes, but they got Joe Burrow, man. I mean, why get rid of that? Give him Travis Kelsey. And there he is, a new 99 overall target in Cincinnati to match up with Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Ooh, wow. I feel like if a different team was to upset Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, then I would give them Patrick Mahomes. But, I mean, come on, it's Joe Burrow. How can you give up Joe Burrow for a quarterback that's, like, just a little bit better? Anyways, a lot of orange now in America. 11 more teams left. Some have still yet to play a game including the Cowboys, but still, they didn't get caught upon. It's the Patriots again. Okay, Patriots, what's up next for you? Looks like the Patriots are doing the exact same strategy they had last game, and that is just rebuild New England, apparently. This is going towards Maine. I know Maine isn't really old New England, but I mean, close enough. Look at this. <laughs> just, this is all the Patriots have account for in this whole series. It's just gathering up these states and then saying, you know what, come fight me, and then they just die instantly. Spinner is going to give us, oh, don't be the Broncos. Really? The Denver Broncos? They're actually going to do something. Wow. Insane. I wonder what they can do other than lose by 30 points. Go up north and expand, maybe? Yep, the only option is go to Wyoming. Uh, it doesn't really accomplish much other than you now share a bigger border with the bigger and badder orange team than you. So, we continue on with our spinner. And we get the Jaguars are back. We haven't heard them in a minute. But they were going crazy at the beginning of this video. Tom Brady, what is his next move? Okay, the spinner is going up. That looks like we're hitting Tennessee there. Jacksonville will be going into Tennessee. I think they got this one in the bag. Okay, so you're telling me that Malik Willis and the Titans have a chance to beat the Jaguars. This would be huge. Malik Willis gets out of it. Slides. Fourth down and four. So this is where they're going to take the kick. I'm surprised the Jaguars are not calling a timeout here. You want to save every second. So they're just going to let Tennessee take this field goal kick, which will be a round of 50 yarder to win the game by one. The Jacksonville Jaguars right now would lose Tom Brady, AJ Terrell, and Tyreek Hill to Malik Willis and a bunch of practice squad dudes. So this is the field goal to shock the Jaguars. Would be huge. Can they do it? Kick is up, is it? Got the distance, just barely. Oh, that was short. Bullock just barely puts it in. Oh, there was like a foot gap between the bar right there. So here's Brady's final play as a Jaguar, more than likely. Just gotta see how far he can get and hope for a touchdown. He throws it about 30 yards. Up, it's caught. Can't break out all of the Titans that just surrounded him. And the Tennessee Titans pull it off, a big upset, and knock out the Jaguars. Maybe Tyreek Hill was the better skill position there, but I just did not see the Titans getting any further with Malik Willis or Joshua Dobbs as their quarterback. So, Tom Brady is now a Tennessee Titan. Welcome to the top 10, everybody that's still left. Jaguars just fell short. They had an insane team. I'm surprised they actually did not make that further. But... We have Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida combined for the Tennessee Titan Empire. And here's a look at the map at the top 10 range. Only three teams have yet to do anything at all. That being the Niners, Cowboys, and Jets. Maybe we'll actually see them, hopefully. Speaking of the Jets, are we going to get them? No, just the barely the Ravens. Looks like the Ravens are going to expand here. This is going to hit either West Virginia or Virginia. This goes through Virginia, so they'll get some more area right here. And up next, we have... Oh, there they are. The Niners. Okay, I want to see if they can somehow upset the Chargers. We don't have to spin the wheel or the, the arrow. It's Niners at Chargers. Let's go. The Niners have a chance. The fate of the universe is in Mr. Irrelevant's hands. Down by six on the run. Almost throws a pick. That's out of bounds. They're down six. It stops the clock. I don't know if you really want that to happen, but, I mean, let's just see. First of all, you got to get a touchdown. This defense is scary. I mean, on the line, Aaron Donald and Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. I mean, oh my goodness. That's just unfair. And then, obviously, in the secondary as well, Derwin James, and I can't even remember who else there is. Here comes some pressure. The offensive line is holding really good, and 
Brock Purdy going to run, scramble himself. He has a first down and goal, and this keeps the clock moving. So a huge play by the rookie to escape that kind of firepower on the defensive line and has brought the clock down to a minute. A touchdown is still number one priority, but if they get it and have this little time for the Chargers, it's a huge difference. Jump ball, way out of the back of the end zone. Second down and goal, stops the clock. Third down and goal, has to hit the end zone. Pressure already, and George Kittle has it. But it's going to be fourth down and goal, and he gets out of bounds too. So that means even if the Niners get it, there's still a lot of time on the left, not on the board. So, I mean, we'll just see what happens. Fourth down and goal from the five. Can the Niners do it? Score a touchdown, extra point would take the lead, and it would leave 40 seconds to the Chargers with three timeouts. Let's just see what happens. Brock Purdy, the rookie, Mr. Relevant from the five. Looks like he has an open receiver. C-Mac going to run himself. Back in the corner, end zone. Oh, huge defensive play. I don't even know who broke that up, but it's definitely one of the new players they got. 20 to 14, turnover on downs, and all that is needed by the Chargers is a first down, and they take down the Niners. And that's going to do it. The LA Chargers will beat the San Francisco 49ers. It got close. I mean, this team is maybe is on the verge of losing, but it's going to be even tougher because they're going to add a, a Niner to the roster now. 20 to 14 victory for the LA Chargers. Chargers will add their second 99 overall player, Trent Williams, left tackle. Insane. Is anybody going to stop this team? I don't know, man. It's it's going to be really tough. Keep it going. Some teams are really good. Some teams are really bad. Some teams definitely shouldn't be here. Uh, these teams should be here. And the... Ooh, this is close. Oh, it was just barely laying on the Ravens. Okay. I don't know what the Ravens can do. They have Virginia still. And they also have... Delaware. Ravens are just stalling right now. They're just waiting for the right... Right moment to shine. Right moment to attack the Bengals, probably. Okay, let's keep on moving. And again? Really? I mean, oh my gosh. So the arrow lands like this. It's pretty close, but it actually cuts through West Virginia. So again, all the Ravens do is expand. The... There's the Bengals. Bengals will be going to... Down south. Straight down south. And that's going to hit Tennessee. So... The Titans versus the Bengals. Uh, okay, okay. Essentially, adding Tom Brady to the Titans did nothing. I mean, Joe Mixon is good, but is he Derrick Henry good? I think we're seeing two clear contenders starting to run away with this game right now. One of them's on the West Coast, and the other one is Cincinnati Bengals. That was Tom Brady's final game. Titans are eliminated. So to our next spin. And we finally, after the whole video, I don't know how long it's been, maybe an hour, have gotten the Dallas Cowboys. And there's really not much they can do. It's Nothing's really going to help them. This looks like it's going to hit the Texans. It does. I think this should be an easy win. Let's see. And so it was the Cowboys win 34-21. to Which means we'll just hand Tyron Matthew to the Cowboys. Yeah, the Texans probably shouldn't have made it that far. But at least they did. And the Cowboys finally got to make a move. So they'll break up this border between uh, North Texas and South Texas. And they will also gather Louisiana on top of it. The Lucky 7. And we will start with... Oh, one of the superpowers, the Chargers, okay. Uh, they might just have to expand here, let's see. Up north a little bit. Yeah, this is going northeast. If you look from their logo, this definitely basically goes to Utah. So this is the first time Utah is getting claimed in both videos. This is funny because the Broncos are basically holding this board together right now. I mean, they are the the fork in the road between the Chargers and Bengals, preventing them from fighting. <laughs> okay, next move. Again, the Chargers. Oh, this is this is scary. They, they are not satisfied with what they have right now. They want more. Uh, I think the only team they could possibly take out is the Broncos here. Okay, arrow points. Same place as last time, but does that come in contact with Denver? Ooh, let's see. It was pretty close, but you can see it actually comes in contact with Idaho. Anybody not name the Chargers for the spin? Or oh, the Bengals, dude. What? What is this wheel loves the Chargers and Bengals? So the Bengals get to make another move, as if they're not already powerful enough. Let's see what they do. Alright, that one cannot work because they went to Canada. This arrow does point towards somewhere in America. It's just going to point to an open state. 
the era went through Arkansas. Now the Cowboys finally share a border with another team. They share a border with the Bengals. Spin is the Cowboys again. Looks like Cowboys will be expanding to Oklahoma. There you have it. They now share a border with Denver as well. And now the Patriots. Okay, finally, something new. I've been waiting for this. This arrow is pointing directly west, and directly west to their logo looks to finally be a team that has not done anything. The Jets. So, Patriots at Jets. Let's see if the Jets can actually pull up a late game miracle. 17 yards to gain with only 30 seconds left. He's going to throw it deep. Mike White to the right end zone. He's got it. There's a flag. Catch after run. And I, this might be coming back, sadly. No, against the defense. Excuse me, it looked like he was pointing towards the office there. So it's first down and 10 from the 14. What a play. Mike White looking again, backing up, throwing before the sack. Has to throw it out of the end zone. Under 20 seconds, 14 yard line. White throws to the end zone. Got it. Touchdown, Jets. Corey Davis, I think that's who had the catch earlier. And now he has the touchdown to put the Jets up above the Patriots. Two-point conversion to make it a three-point game. Going to pass. White, quick pass. He's got it. Garrett Wilson, two-point conversion good. More than likely the final play of the game. Jones, going to pass. Yep, going to look for the end zone here. Throws it that way. Let's see. It's caught, but it's short. Well short. And the Jets have a crazy touchdown drive to win the game. And they finally do something on the map. Jets win 34-31. Saquon Barkley's made his way back to New York, just not in the way you might have thought. It was actually a pretty good game up north. The Jets take out to New England, and they will gain from Maine to Massachusetts. So now our spins are really important, especially if they land on the Bengals again, or the Jets. This is a toss-up, the same color, the Bengals. Arrow's going to land, that might be going towards the Jets. Arrow's going to point towards the Jets, but there's somebody in the way from them, the Ravens. So the Bengals are going to go into Baltimore. We know how stacked they are, but don't sleep on Baltimore. They're pretty good too. Just a reminder to some of the players these teams stole. The Bengals, Travis Kelsey, Justin Jefferson, Derrick Henry, and the Ravens, Terry McLaurin, Jordavius White, and not shown as A.J. Brown. Midfield, we have the Bengals in offense first. They're down by six. This would be one of those games where I expect a touchdown in every drive. I mean, just look at the players who are on this roster. Look at all the star icons underneath each player we're gonna start with a pass to guess who travis kelsey that'll be a pickup of about eight nine yards It'll be second down and six and that's gonna take us to the two minute warning so second down and ten with a minute just had an incompletion burrow going to t higgins i'm surprised he still has a role in this team third down and six now we're under a minute he has all the stars in the world to go out to has all the time in the world too and this one's probably gonna go towards the end zone it's caught by jamar chase at the four, timeout Bengals, first down and goal. First down and goal, four yards to get. Jamar Chase has it. You don't even need to use anybody else other than the man you already got. That's a touchdown. It's a tie game now. Extra point takes the lead. Own 28-yard line, under 20. Lamar looking. Good protection here. Oh, he gets sacked. Timeout is called. Second and 14 with 14 seconds. Might just have to have a jump ball here. Offensive line holds up pretty well. Lamar just going to take off himself. Looking to get a lot of yards here. Oh, he fumbles the football. Picked up by the Bengals. And that's going to do it. Tackled out of bounds with one second left. Lamar was just trying to get a bunch of yards in so he could have a, a closer Hail Mary. I want to see who poked that fumble free. It was one of the star players. I can't tell who it was. Might have been Jesse Bates. But Lamar Jackson, costly turnover, loses this game for the Ravens. Both these teams were so stacked, it's sad that only one team can get past. And so Joe Burrow, with Derrick Henry to his left and Joe Mixon to his right, will take the knee, win this game over the Baltimore Ravens, 31-30. The Bengals were way too stacked in offense, so I decided to give them Tredavious White. I'm sorry, Ravens. Both of you guys' teams were really good, but the Bengals were just a bit better. So here is your final five teams. Chargers, Cowboys, Bengals, Jets, and the Broncos, who have yet to do anything other than expand to Wyoming. So our final five teams, our spins are very important now, unless you're the Broncos, because they'd probably just expand. And I hope the Chargers take out the Broncos here. I'm not a Broncos hater, but they just, they are a waste of space in these videos. 
So they either expand or they take out the Broncos. So this is a look at our arrow. You can actually see that that just goes to Montana. So Chargers will get Montana. Okay, next spin. And oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> it's just the Chargers are rigging this wheel. Hmm. All right. I wonder what the Chargers do here. <sighs> oh my goodness, Chargers. Can you do something, please? On the plus side, it's impossible for the Chargers to expand now. They have to play either Denver or Dallas. Let's just hope this wheel maybe does not land on them this time. My heart dropped for a second, but we are seeing the same two teams. I mean, it's just the Chargers and Bengals. You wonder why they did so good? It's because of the only teams getting selected. I'm sorry, this is not rigged. That is a randomizer spinner. And, okay. This is pointing towards... Ooh, let's see. It's a long line, but this one comes in contact with Dallas. So that means the Bengals, who are stacked enough, will be going into Cowboys territory. The Cowboys actually have a shot in this game. First down and goal. They're going to need the touchdown and two-point conversion. Daxon keeping himself. And Jesse Bates comes in a blitz and takes him down. And he's stopped at the one-yard line. So second down and goal now. This Bengals defense, not as stacked as their offense, but I mean... Some solid players on it. They just got Tredavious White, too. Remember that. So, we're to 2 minutes and 50 seconds left from the 1-yard line. Dak Prescott and the Cowboys, they have not had the time in this video to build up such as the Bengals have. But they have a chance to knock them out, at least, as Zeke pushes this one through. 2-point conversion would tie this game at 28. To tie this game up, 2-point conversion. Easy money. Zeke has got it again. We're tied at 28. So plenty of time in the game, so the Bengals are just going to run the ball. Derrick Henry, pick up a four. One yard to gain for Joe Burrow. Easy enough, Justin Jefferson, his new target, to the 42. So the Bengals are already at the 42-yard line with a minute and 30 on the clock. I imagine they can just manage this game pretty good. Travis Kelsey, I mean, there's just targets all over the board. I mean, what can you do here? Well, so much for that Cowboys touchdown, but that's just what happens when you have the best one-two punch in the league. Derrick Henry going to run the ball. Joe Mixon runs it, and then Derrick Henry runs it. And then on third down, you pass it to Travis Kelsey, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. What do you even do there? Bengals call a timeout, third down and five. Here's the kick from Money Mac. He's got it. 31-28, Cowboys ball now. So this is probably it for the Cowboys. With only eight seconds left, Dak is going to look to go deep here from his own around eight-yard line. Throws it up, zeroes in the clock. Knocked down. Bengals win. And they're going to add another star to the roster as they prep the take on the Chargers. You might have said Michael Parsons, but Zach Martin can't really pass on him. And so, Cowboys, at least you guys cracked the top five. Uh, somehow the Broncos made it further than you guys, but that doesn't really count, to be fair, because they'll probably be out next turn. Speaking of the Broncos, yeah, it's their turn. I wonder what they can do. Let's see. The Broncos will be going up north. And that hits Chargers land. Okay, well, we know what's going to happen here. I'm actually surprised that the Broncos actually put up 28 points here. But Chargers obviously win. And the Chargers will add 90 overall Patrick Sertan. And just as I expected, the Broncos are eliminated. So here's your top three teams right here. As well as a really big spin for every single team on the board right here. Especially the Jets. Speaking of the Jets. So they can expand here, but more than likely they're going to have to take on the Bengals. Let's see what the arrow says. It's going to point towards, ooh, that could be New Jersey. So here's a look at the arrow again. I just had to use a straight edge. You can see how close this was, but this is touching Bengals land right here. Weirdly enough, in our second to last game, we're in overtime. The Jets are going to get a touchdown here. A touchdown run from Michael Carter will put him up. Se no, Saquon Barkley, actually. I forgot he's in the Jets now. That's right. They beat the Patriots. This isn't the win the game, though. The Bengals will get a chance. But a very high-scoring game between these teams. The Bengals offense, let's see if they can do it. Down by seven in overtime, Joe Burrow has to work this loaded offense to a touchdown drive. That's going to start the Justin Jefferson to the 33. So from the 44, first down and 10 now. Another pass. Jamar Chase is open. Second and eight from the 42-yard line. Burrow takes a sack, fumbles the football. It's picked up by the Bengals. Okay. If the Jets recovered, they would have won the game right there. And that would have been huge. Third down and 20 now. So the Bengals are in jeopardy, though. I mean, this team is really good. The fact that they let the Jets score 49 points, insane. And this Jets team, they can beat the Chargers, too. Saquon Barkley must be carrying the living hell out of this team. So 20 yards to go for Burrow and this offense. Looking. At least try to get 10 here. Don't take the sack. He's got a pass. Oh, is that inbounds? First down and 10, Jamar Chase. 
So that sack means nothing. Bangles right back in it. Oh man, we're going to a booth review. Never mind. I was unsure if he was inbound, but let's get a good look at it. This is huge. If it's taken off the board, it'd be a fourth down and 20. I didn't see two feet right there. I didn't have an angle. One foot right there. Other foot out of bounds. This has to come back. This would be a fourth down and 20. And it's taken off. It's a fourth down and 20. The good call there. This is it. Can the Jets pull off a miracle upset? Mixon on motion to receiver. Burrow going for the pass. Broken up. Sauce Gardner saves the Jets. The New York Jets pull off the biggest upset ever and beat the star-studded Bengals. Travis Kelsey, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. I can't even name all of them. Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, Joe Burrow just got beat by Mike White. <laughs> the Jets win 49-42. I couldn't pass on a 99 overall being Travis Kelsey. Yes, there was Justin Jefferson and Zach Martin. But I mean, look, 99 overall Jets. Final player stolen right there. I was thinking this Bengals team would be unbeatable and the only team that could take them on was the Chargers. Prove me wrong, Jets. Because now... You just claimed land from Maine to Texas and will now face the Chargers in the final game. Now, if you remember last time, this spin means who gets home. Because remember, it's still going to, it's not a Super Bowl, it's home and away, depending on who's attacking, who's defending. Here's a look at the map before one team takes control of all of it. And our final count of states that were not claimed, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states were unclaimed in this video. So this spin right here is for who gets home, who gets away. The team it lands on will be on the road. The Jets will be on the road. Oh gosh, they got to go play the Chargers on their home field. Anyways, final game. Who will win, the Jets or the Chargers? So the final game begins. Here's a look at some of the key players on both teams. Travis Kelsey, Saquon Barkley, and Makai Becton for the Jets. Aaron Donald, Devontae Adams, and Derwin James for the Chargers. Just to name a few. So we begin. So we pick up. The Jets are currently leading by one. The Chargers are at midfield. 15 to 14. Can the Jets have another great defensive stop by this young group? Minute and 30 on the clock. All the Chargers need is probably about 10 more yards. Fakes a handoff to Austin Eckler. And a catch to Keenan Allen is going to put him into Jets territory. Just short of the field goal range though. This would still be around a 50-yard kick, so they're still going to need some more than this. Another handoff to Eckler. Oh, he goes to the wrong side. Big gap on the left, but hits the right. It's a gain of none. Third and six now. Huge stop for the Jets up next. I wonder if the Chargers are going to pass here. It's not like they have Devontae Adams and DeAndre Hopkins or anything. Eckler is open. Looking. Can't take the sack. Herbert, throw on the run. Almost throws a pick. That should have been picked off. That was a sauce gardener. Couldn't hold on to it. It's a 4th down and 6 from the 35. They're going to send out their kicker here. It's going to be a longer kick than they wish they got, but... So this is Hopkins for the kick. To take a 2-point lead for the Chargers. Up. Looks like he made it. Chargers will be up 2, 17-15. Jets get the ball back with 1 minute. Jets will start from the 26. Field goal drive needed for Mike White to win the map. Can he do it? White. Looking, throws out of the sack, and has to throw it out of bounds, second down and 10. Remember, Mike White has some weapons of his own. Garrett Wilson, Travis Kelsey, and Saquon Barkley. This team is good too. It's just a matter of fact, if they can be better now, that's a catch. Corey Davis is going to pick up eight, but not out of bounds. It's in the interior, so time is up to 40 seconds now and going down as we speak. Jets get up with about 30 seconds left, third down and two. So, have to the first down here and hopefully something out of bounds as well. Khalil Mack almost got the Mike White. There's a flag. Could this be roughing the passer? It looked like it could be. No. Holding on the offense. Huge. I wonder, do they accept or decline this? It'd be a fourth down and two if they decline. They decline. This could be game. Fourth down and two. I probably would have accepted it there. But I'm not the coach. Handoff. Can't do it. They try to sneak to a fullback. Chargers stop the Jets, and the Jets cannot stop the clock enough. That should do it. 
A lot of things I don't understand there. Number one, that holding call really just decided the game. Number two, you have Saquon Barkley. You have Travis Kelsey. Just come on now. I mean, there's a lot of better options there. The Jets were a really good team, but this Chargers team was just something else. The fact that the Jets took out the Bengals, in my opinion, is winning the map enough. But one more knee for Justin Herbert, and the Chargers will claim all of America. And so now zeros on the clock. Justin Herbert and the Chargers have done it. They have won the second ever Imperialism map. Congratulations to the Jets for making it much farther than I thought they would. I know they kind of played it slow the entire game, but beating the Bengals was just insane. But now the entire map just turned blue. And so there it is, the LA Chargers win Imperialism Episode 2. Thank you guys for watching. If you're watching this far, I just can't believe it. I mean, it must have been two hours or something. This one was insane. Uh, thank you to, again, Nicholas and Bryson for these ideas, and a lot of you other guys also had this idea too. Uh, but really fun idea, really changed the whole board. And also, thank you for 5,000 subscribers. At the time I'm recording this, I just hit it. It's crazy because last night when sleep had about 4,000 I don't know how much longer this is going to go on for, but I mean, I will just gladly accept it. Anyways, that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you later.